Hi there, my name's Larissa Bilston and I'm an equine nutritionist working for Pharmalogic and based in Brisbane, Australia. Today I want to talk to you about supplementing horses in springtime. How can you get it right and make sure it's simple and cost effective at the same time? My tips for preparing your horse for spring are to really keep a close eye on body condition score. It's a good idea to allow your horse usually to lose a little bit of weight over winter if that naturally happens. A little bit of rib to show is all right. Obviously we don't want to go too far and have our horses skinny, but some seasonal variation in body condition seems to help metabolism. Keep a really close eye on your horse's weight and, and neck crest as we come into the danger time for laminitis and be prepared to act quickly to cut feeds right down just back to a balancer pellet so that your horse isn't getting any more calories than it can handle. If you do need to lock your horse up for weight loss purposes, make sure it's still getting enough exercise. Um, a, a sort of a partial, a partial lockup situation can be, can be brought about by using a grazing muzzle and or strip grazing, but make sure you use a back fence. We don't want horses grazing really, really short, sweet pasture. If you do need to use a, a Jenny Craig paddock, a safe area and, and a safe hay supply is the way to do it. And we will go into some detail as to, as to how to do that in the next few slides. And there are, research does indicate that supplementing with marine sourced omega-3 fatty acids, that's DHA, can improve cell energy metabolism and, and your insulin regulation so it impacts on fat metabolism basically it can be one more tool in your toolkit so laminitis fighter or omega balancer can be useful to be adding into the diet of horses during a weight loss phase and then maintaining our horses at a healthy weight during spring so continuing with the use of, of mineral balances um, if you can control the calories independently there are advantages to being able to feed your, your minerals as a standalone product and then just add extra calories if the horse isn't able to maintain weight on pasture alone. Make sure you're keeping up the horse's exercise and we'll come and have a look again in detail at how much exercise is needed to have an impact on, on weight loss. Um, make sure you're choosing safe forages. We don't want too much sugar and starch going into our horse's gut in, in springtime because of the laminitis risk that that poses. And if your horse is one who does tend to scour when the lush grass comes through, think about some protected live yeast probiotics, something like Pharmalogic Rejuvenate can help manage, can help manage that and maintain a healthy gut through that that sudden change of feed, which is largely unavoidable in most cases. Now you can't pick a suitable forage for a horse just by looking at it, but there are some guides to choosing safer, safer times of the plant life cycle to graze. So some plant parts just are naturally higher in, in starch and sugars. Um, because of the way the plant photosynthesizes and utilizes the energy that it creates during photosynthesis. So um, we wanna be avoiding stems and seed heads and the, and the plant parts that are really close to the ground because they are all going to be higher in starch and sugars than the leaves. The really short lush leaves are not ideal for um, they are high in, high in sugar but the longer leaves, so plants that are sort of, you know, 10 to 20 centimetres long before they're setting seed are actually the safest um, part of the plant's life cycle for horses. Obviously, the challenge there is to make sure that the, that the horse isn't getting too much of that grass. So that's where strip grazing and back fences or limiting the amount of time the horse has access to that pasture is the way to go. But although some plant parts are more likely to be low in sugar and starch, those levels do change throughout the day and from day to day, week to week and across the seasons. So if you have a laminitis prone horse, you would know that that pasture management is, is really critical and, and also a very challenging area to manage. 
Some examples of some of the safer types of horse pasture grasses are given here. We really want to avoid those high production um, species like your, your ryegrass and clover species as much as possible with, with horses because those plants are designed to provide as, as much sugar and starch and calories as they can to rapidly grow cattle. And unfortunately, the, the horse's system is designed for a much lower calorie intake. Now, the same sorts of rules apply to hay. And some hay can be generally safer, but unfortunately you can't tell just by looking at it. You really do need lab test results to know for sure whether the hay that you're choosing is safe for, uh, for weight loss or for an insulin resistant or laminitis prone horse. So what we're looking for when we're choosing forage for, for horses during weight loss or for insulin resistance is, is when the ethanol soluble carbohydrates and the starch values that come back from the lab, when those numbers are added together, we want them to be less than 10%. So if you are looking at this diagram here, you'll see that this red zone is the danger zone for laminitis. That's where the ESC and starch is over 10%. So those, those samples, those haze are high in sugar and starch, too high for a horse during weight loss phase. The green zone down here is, is where our ESC and starch is less than 10%. And that, those are the hays that we want to be choosing for horses who are locked up and being provided with hay all day. So as a generalisation, we often say that loosen hay is a, is a good option for horses who are locked up because it generally is lower in sugar and starch. Having said that, we don't want loosen to ever be more than 20 or 30% of the horse's total intake. And some horses do seem to have their laminitis triggered by, by loosen, and we don't really understand why, but hopefully that answer will become clear one day in the future. This was American data, and they, they had a category here called grass hay. So I think, you know, if you're looking for, for hay made from those grasses that were shown in the previous slide, rather than ryegrass hay, chances are some of those hays will fall into the safe zone. But when we look at the cereal hays, our oat and wheat and barley hays, they are going to be most likely the, the wrong sort of hay, too high in sugar and starch for a weight loss situation. But having said all of that, you can see that although these the tops of these blue bars shows us the average value of these feeds, the yellow lines here indicate the range. So some of the cereal hay samples were actually okay. And some of the some of the grass and lucerne that we might think would be all right were up in the in the safe zone, in the danger zone, I'm sorry. So the best way to be certain of how much energy is in, in your hay is to send a sample away from the lab. If that's not practical or possible, because um, it's really only worth doing if you're going to be feeding the same batch of hay for a long period of time then you can soak the hay, which can reduce the, the ESC and starch content by 20% 20, 20 or so. So you need to be soaking it for a minimum of half an hour in hot water or an hour in cold water. Generally, if you put it in a hay net before you soak it, then lift the hay net out after the soak time, let it drain for 10 or 15 minutes and then give it to the horse. Make sure you're throwing away soaked hay at least every 12 hours too to avoid the risk of mould contamination. So back again on this theme of you can't pick a suitable forage just by looking at it. Having said that, the plant parts with the lowest sugar and starch levels are different at different times of the day because the plant is making, making um, sugar and starch through photosynthesis during the day. So its levels get higher as the day goes on and then during the night it redistributes that, that energy source to its roots and stems. So what that means for us as horse owners is that we can graze with caution um, if our horse is not at really super high risk during the early morning. So you want to have them in by about 10 a.m. But if there's been a frost, the, the grass will be stressed and will be higher in sugar. 
um, you may get a little bit later out of your pasture. You might be able to go a bit later if the grass is being shaded because it photosynthesizes less. Okay, so to summarize, um, the the hardest the hardest part about helping horses lose weight is to ensure that they're able to eat all the time, but that they're not eating too many calories or getting too much sugar into their bloodstream, which causes an insulin spike and it's that insulin hormone that triggers laminitis. So how do we help our overweight horses lose weight safely? First of all, don't starve them. Provide them with a low ESC and starch forage for much of the day and night. Try to avoid horses going more than four hours without something to eat because that is a gastric ulcer risk and also lowers metabolism. So it's working against us. Do soak your hay as previously described to reduce the um, calorie and, and sugar content. If you are able to let your horse graze, make sure you choose the plants that are available and the time of day very carefully. And limit the total intake of your horse to about one and a half percent of its body weight. So that's one and a half kilos of food per hundred kilos of body weight. Your horse will need a mineral balancer pellet or powder to top up the vitamins, minerals and omega-3 oils, even if it is only on a hay diet. So a token feed that carries those supplements is all that they need during that weight loss phase. It means that a, a balancer supplement or pellet is far more appropriate than one of those laminitis safe feeds that add safe calories, so they're low sugar and starch, but nevertheless they're adding calories that an overweight horse doesn't need save those laminitis safe feeds for um, times when your your insulin resistant horse or your laminitis prone horse does need to have some extra calories if grass isn't able to provide enough calories for them and make sure you're able to provide enough exercise if your horse is sound so there are a couple of ways of, of going about that. You can ensure that your horse exercises more or you can encourage it to exercise more by having more than one spot in the, in the lockup area where the horse can, can eat. So hay nets in different places or a laneway system so that the horse has to move around to travel from food to water. And then, and then more formal exercise. So if your horse isn't laminitic, you want to be able to give it low to moderate intensity of exercise. So basically canter to fast canter um, for more than half an hour, five or six times a week. I, that's a lot more than, than I think a lot of us usually give to our fat ponies, but that's actually what they require. A lot more caution is going to be needed for horses who have been laminitic. You'll need your vets go ahead that the hoof capsules stable enough to work. Um, these horses are probably not going to be able to be ridden at least initially. So they have a lower intensity exercise on a soft surface, carefully watching them for lameness. Um, and we're again looking at sort of trot to canter 30 minutes a day, at least three days a week. <laughs>